All right, welcome back. This is our second lesson on Pascal's triangle. And just reminding you, we start, it's covered, started. You need to watch the first video before you watch this. So Pascal's triangle starts with one. And then what do we have? After one, we have what? One, one. And then we have what? One, add one plus one. One plus one is what? Two and a one. And now what do we have? One, two plus one is three. 2 plus 1 is 3, and we have a 1 on the end, and then what? 1, 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 1 is 4, and we have a 1 on the end. What's our last row? 1, 5, well not our last row, this thing goes on forever, but the um, last row that we're going to write is up through this, uh, the 6th row. 4 plus 6 is 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, 4 plus 1 is 5, and we have a 1 on the end, reminding you. This top row is x plus y to the 0 power. This is x plus y to the first power. This is quantity x plus y. I should say quantity x plus y squared. This is quantity x plus y to the third power. This is quantity x plus y to the fourth power. And this row is quantity x plus y to the fifth power. And we're going to look at expanding binomials that are not just x and y. But we're going to start with, well, let's quickly review that. x plus y to the third power is expanded by starting with x. Remember, this is a monstrous problem if we write x plus y times x plus y times x plus y. This is a lot of work. Uh, you're welcome to do this. You're welcome to FOIL on a test or on quizzes. But if you know Pascal's triangle, you're also welcome to use Pascal's triangle. So we can do this. Instead of FOILing, we simply use the trick of start with the first variable x. x to the third power, using the largest degree written is third degree, all the way down to zero. So x to the third, then what? x squared, then x, then x to the zero. Now start with your, or now finish with the y variable and go backwards. So we're going to start at zero and go up. Okay, so we're with, with a second variable start at zero. So we're going to start at y to the zero and go up to three. y to the first, y squared, and y to the third. And now we look at this row in Pascal's triangle, this row. One, three, three, one. We're going to put our coefficients in. One, three, three, one. And now write our final answer. Remember that 1 and y to the 0 are both 1. These can be ignored, so we're just going to write x to the 3rd. And now plus 3xy squared, x squared y, I'm sorry. And then plus 3xy squared. And then the 1 and the x to the 0, which is also 1, can be ignored. And we have plus y to the 3rd. Why? Because we don't write. We don't write 1 y to the 3rd. This is redundant rather just y to the third, okay? And this is our final answer. Now, much faster than foiling. So let's look at now at quantity x plus two to the third power. Very similar, but here we don't have a y, we have a two, okay? So let's look at this now. Starting with the first variable x, we start with x to what power? We start with x to the third, and go all the way down to zero. So x to the third, x squared, x, and x to the zero. Now we're going to take our second. Well, here we had variable y. Now we don't have a variable. We have a constant 2. But we do the same thing. Just like we did y to the zero, y to the first, y squared, and y cubed, or 0, 1, 2, 3 for the degree, we do the same thing with the 2. We're first going to have 2 to the zero. Then we're going to have 2 to the first. Go ahead and put this in parentheses. We're going to have 2 to the first. And then we're going to have 2 squared. And then we're going to have 2 to the third. Putting all of these in parentheses. Now, let's go ahead and figure out what this is before we put our coefficients in. Okay, so what is 2 to the... Well, nah, that, that might be more confusing. Let's go ahead and put our coefficients in. Go ahead and put the coefficients in. What coefficients are we dealing with? It's third degree, so we're going to put our coefficients 1, 3, 3, 1. So we're looking at what? A 1, then what? A 3, we're running out of space. A 3, and what? A 1. Now, looking at our first term, looking at our first term, what is 1? Well, 1 is just 1. 2 to the 0, 
2 to the 0 is also 1. So the 2 to the 0 and the 1 can be ignored. These are both representations of 1. So we just have 1x cubed or x to the 3rd. And we're done with this term. Now, what is 2 to the 1st power? 2 to the 1st power is 2. And we're going to take the 2 and multiply by the 3. 2 times 3 gives what? A 6. So we're going to have positive 6. And we have x squared. Okay? Now, what is 2 to the second power, or 2 squared? Well, 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. Crossing this out, this is a 4. Now multiply the 4 and the 3. 4 times 3 is what? 4 times 3 is 12. So we get plus 12x. Now, on the last one, we have a 1, which can be ignored. We have an x to the 0, which can also be ignored. And we just have to look at 2 to the 3rd. What is 2 to the 3rd? This is not 6. This is 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is what? 8. So we have an 8 on the end, and this is the final answer. Much faster than foiling if you guys practice. It does take some practice. The more you practice, the faster this becomes. Very fast. So now let's look at, now let's look at quantity x plus 3 to the 4th power. Okay, so this, these numbers can get very large. So let's look at this, x plus 3 to the 4th. So we're going to start with the first variable, x. This is what? x to the fourth, then x to the third. Oh, I'm going to leave more space. x squared, x, and then x to the what? Zero. Oop. Maybe need some room over here. x, then x to the zero. And now we're going to do our second, well, this is not variable. This is constant, our second entity within the binomial. This is 3, so we're now going to go backwards on the 3. We're going to start at 0, then go up to 4. So we're going to start with 3 to the 0. Go ahead and put it in parentheses. Uh, maybe this, the exponent on the outside of the parentheses. How about this? 3 to the 0, putting the 3 inside parentheses, putting the exponent on the outside. Okay, so then we have what? 3 to the 1st, then what? 3 to the 2nd, 3 to the 3rd power, and then 3 to the 4th power, running out of space there. And now put your coefficients. Look at the row for x plus y to the 4th. So looking at the 4th power, we have 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So we're going to put a 1, a 4, a 6, a 4, and a 1. Now. 3 to the 0 power is another representation of 1. Okay, so 1 times 1 is 1. We can ignore the 1s. We just have x to the 4th, and we're done with this term. Now, what is 3 to the 1st power? So it just has to be calculated. 3 to the 1st power is 3. And now 3 times 4. Multiply these. We're not adding them. We're multiplying. 3 times 4 is 12. So we get plus 12x to the 3rd. And now, what is 3 squared? 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is... 9, now take 9 times 6, 9 times 6 is 54x squared. You say these numbers are getting very big. They are, but if you try to FOIL x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 3, you would be dealing with these big numbers in several, several steps. So it's much easier to deal with these big numbers just one time. 3 to the third means 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is what? 27. So we have 27 times 4, which is 108. We have 108 x to the first power. And now 3 to the fourth. 3 to the fourth means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Again, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. We can pair them up. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 9 is what? 9 times 9 is 81. So we end up with what? 3 to the fourth is another representation of 81. We have 1 and x to the 0. 1 and x to the 0 can be ignored. So we just have plus 81 on the end. And this is the final answer. Now, there's only two more. I see one more type of problem we have to look at. We'll do two examples. And this involves what happens when this 3 is not positive, but when this 3 is negative. OK, so let's look at. This is all still very basic. Looking at. Well, I guess maybe two more types of examples. I guess I'll give a complicated one. So we're looking at now quantity x plus, no, I'm sorry, quantity x minus uh, 3 
to the, uh, let's do, I don't have room, for, I probably ran out of room for five. Let's do the same thing. Quantity x minus three to the fourth power. I guess we could do x minus two. That's fine. x minus two to the fourth. A little different. x minus two to the fourth. So we start with x. We do x to the fourth all the way down to zero. x to the third. We're going to need more space. x to the third. x squared. x and what? x to the zero. And now put in the second. Now be careful here. We don't just have a two. We have what? A negative 2. So the negative 2 will go inside parentheses. So we're going to have negative 2 inside parentheses. And we're going to start at 0 power and go up to 4th power. So 0, negative 2 to the 0. Then negative 2 to the 1st. Negative 2 squared. Negative 2 quantity to the 3rd. And negative 2 to the 4th. Notice that the negative is in, inside the parentheses, not outside. This means... Is the exponent affecting the 2 and the negative? Yes. Remember, negative 2 squared is, I'm sorry, negative 2 quantity squared is different than negative 2 squared. Remember, does the exponent affect the negative 1 and the 2? Yes. So we have negative 2 multiplied by negative 2, which gives positive 4. However, negative 2 squared without parentheses, the exponent just affects the 2. So we have negative is not being affected. So we just have one negative. Notice in the previous, we had two negatives. Okay, we squared the negatives. So we had negative and negative. We had two and two. Negative two times negative two is positive four. Here we just square the two. So we have one negative and two twos. Okay, so negative two times two is negative four. So there's a big difference with parentheses without. The parentheses are necessary. Put the negative inside the parentheses with the two. And now negative two quantity to the zero. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to put in our coefficients. So fourth degree, what are our coefficients? One, four, six, four, one. Put these in. So we have one, four, six, four, one. And now just calculate. Negative two quantity to the zero power is another representation of one. Anything to the zero power is one, except for what? Remember zero to the zeroth? Zero to the zeroth is what? Indeterminate. By the way, I might as well show you this. Why is, why is, just really quick, why is 7 to the 0 power equal to 1? Why is this the case? Let me show you really quick. Okay, so why? I can always answer these questions for you guys if you would like to know. 7 to the 0 is 1 because 7 to the 0 is 7 to the n minus n power. n minus n. Let's use x. How about x minus x? Okay. So x minus x is 0. Now, we're going to break this up as 7 to the x multiplied by 7 to the negative x. If we have matching bases, for instance, if I say 5 squared times 5 to the third, if the bases match, can we add the exponents? Yes, we get 5 to the fifth. So if I tell you 5 to the x, if I say 5 to the x power multiplied by 5 to the x power, don't the bases match? Yes, so this is 5 to the what? x plus x. So if I say 7 to the x, if I say 7 to the x multiplied by 7 to the negative x, this is 7 to the x plus negative x, which is minus x. So 7 to the x minus x is 7 to the x times 7 to the negative x, which is the same as, which is the same as 7 to the x multiplied by, we take the negative exponent, move it to the bottom. This is 1 over 7 to the x which is the same as 7 to the x over 7 to the x, which cancels and is equal to 1. So there is your proof. There is your proof for why 7 to the 0 is equal to 1. Okay, but 0 to the 0th is indeterminate. Really quick, back to this. Now, negative 2 to the first power. Negative 2 to the first power is negative 2. Cross this out. So we have negative 2. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't do the first term. So we have 1 times 1, which is what? 1 times 1, which is 1. The 1's can be ignored. We have x to the fourth. Cross this term out. Now, negative 2 to the first is negative 2. Negative 2 times 4. Be careful. We have sign problems here. Negative 2 times positive 4 is negative 8x to the third. Cross this term out. Now, negative 2 quantity squared. Are we squaring the negative and the 2? Yes. This means negative 2 times negative 2, which is what? Positive 4. So this negative 2 quantity squared is positive 4. So we have positive 4 times 6, which is what? Plus 
x squared, and now negative 2 cubed. What is negative 2 cubed? Are we cubing the negative and the 2? Yes, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. If we multiply a negative number three times, we get a negative. So this is negative 2 times negative 2 is, negative, is positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So this is negative 8. Take negative 8, multiply by 4, we get what? Negative 32x. And then lastly, we have negative 2 to the 4th. This means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So this is what? 4 negative 2s multiplied together gives a positive 16. So you start to see a pattern. Negative 2 times negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. What if we have an even number of negatives multiplied together? We get a positive number. What if we have an odd number of negatives multiplied together? We get a negative number. What if we have an even number of negatives multiplied together? We get a positive number because every two negatives cancel out and become a positive. Every two negatives cancel and become a positive, so we get a positive 16. Here, every two negatives cancel and become a positive. Every two negatives cancel and become a positive, but what do we have if there's an odd number? We have an extra negative. Something very important to note there. Now, so we get a positive 16, and 16 times 1 times 1 can be ignored, so this is just 16. And notice, this is a big clue. Do you see that the signs alternate? Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. If you have a negative inside, the signs will alternate. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, etc. Now, one more example. <coughs> this is the hardest one. Still not that bad. The more you practice, the faster you get with this thing. And like I said, if you had to foil this stuff, it would take a lot longer than using Pascal's triangle. So now let's look at 2x plus, or let's do minus 3 to the fourth power. I guess we can do, uh, yeah, that's fine, fourth power. So we're going to start with the 2x. Now be careful here. Here, this is 2x. Not just x, but 2x quantity. So put this in parentheses to the fourth. 2x quantity to the third. 2x quantity to the second. 2x quantity to the first. And I'm running out of space. Ugh. Try it again. 2x quantity to the fourth. 2x quantity to the third. 2x quantity... 2x quantity squared, just trying to get my spacing right. 2x quantity to the first. Ugh. 2x quantity to the zero. And now what do we have? Now we have to start with our second. Okay, or now we do the second backwards, starting at power zero for the negative three. So now we have what? Negative three quantity to the zero. Negative three quantity to the first. Negative three quantity squared. Negative three quantity to the third and negative 3 quantity to the 4th, and now put our coefficients in. What are they? 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So we have 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, and the hardest part about this is the multiplication. So let's look at the first term. Let's take care of this exponent. Negative 3 to the... What did I do? This is negative 3 to the 0. So negative 3 to the 0, negative 3 to the 1st, negative 3 squared, negative 3 cubed, negative 3 to the 4th. I, I wrote that wrong. Negative 3 to the 0, this is negative 3, negative number to the 0 power does not matter. Anything to the 0 is what? 1. The 1 and the 1 can be ignored. We have what? Quantity 2x to the 4th. Now be careful here. 2x to the 4th power. Are we taking the 4th power of the 2 and the x? Yes. Exponents distribute over multiplication. This is 2x times 2x times 2x times 2x, which is what? 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16x to the 4th. So 16x to the 4th. Our first term is 16x to the fourth, and we're done with the first term. Now, negative 3 to the first, negative 3 to the first is negative 3. What else do we have here? Cross this out, add 2x cubed. 2x cubed is 2x times 2x times 2x, which is what? 8x to the third, and this is what? 8x to the third, and then a 4. So we have 4 times 8 times negative 3. 4 times 8 is 32, times negative 3 is negative 96 x to the what? x to the third. Cross this term out. Negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, which is 9. We have what? 2x squared, which is 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared times a 6. 6 times 4 is 24. 24 times 9 is 200. No, I'm sorry. 
180, 9 times 4 is 36, 216. So 24 times 9, whoa, wait a minute, 180, 9 times 6, I'm sorry, 9 times 4 is 36, yeah, 216. Why is that not coming out right? 216 should be, oh, the cube of 6, that's where I went wrong. Okay, yes, that's 216. Okay, so 216, I'm just thinking 6 cubed in my head. 216x squared, and now, Negative 3 cubed is negative 27 uh, times 2x to the first times a 4. So we have 4 times 2, which is 8, times negative 27 is negative 160. 8 times 7 is 56, also negative 216. Yeah, so okay, that is 6 cubed because we have two factors. I'm just thinking in terms of factors, guys. So I always check my answers in terms of factors in my head, but for some reason I was missing the extra factor of 3 on the first. Now, negative 216, what? Negative 216x. And then negative 3 to the 4th is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 81. We ignore the 1, and the 2x to the 0 is also 1. This is your final answer, and the worst that it can get. But I'm not going to emphasize that you guys have to do this in class. Uh, rather, I just want you to be familiar with this. Now, reminding you really quick, really quick, what is 1 equal to? 1 is equal to 1, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 1 is what? 4, 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 3 is 7, plus 1 is 8, 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 6 is what? Six, 11 plus 4 is 15, plus 1 is 16. Remember, this is what? 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1st, 2 squared, 2 cubed, and 2 to the 4th power, each of these numbers. Now, remember that this is combination, what? 4 choose 0, combination 4 choose 1, combination 4 choose 2, combination 4 choose 3, and combination 4 choose 4. So if I ask you, what is combination 4 choose 0 plus combination 4 choose 1 plus combination 4 choose 2 plus combination 4 choose 3 plus combination 4 choose 4, what is this? This is equal to 2 to the 4th power, which is equal to 16. So if we add all the combinations up, we end up with 2 to the 16th, okay? This is useful in set theory. So if we're looking at here, combination, combination 5 choose 0 plus combination 5 choose 1 plus combination 5 choose 2 plus combination 5 choose 3 plus combination 5 choose 4 plus combination 5 choose 5 is equal to what? This is equal to 2 to the 5th, which is equal to 32. So the sum of all combinations, or the number of subsets of a set, we call this the number of elements in the power set of A. Okay, this is for advanced algebra 2 kids. All right, we say that this is equal to what? This is equal to 32. All right, so this is just a quick little brief on that. Done with this lesson. Good luck on your homework, guys.